This is the new Toyota CHR, and well, you're not going to miss it, are you? You know, it doesn't seem that long ago that Toyota seemed incapable of making interesting cars. I mean, things like the Auris and the Avensis and the Yaris, they were good in their own way, you know, they were reliable and economical, but in terms of interest, well, they were about as interesting as a wheelie bin. Now though, now Toyota is really on top of its game. Things like the Supra, the GR Yaris, the GR86, and even the bread and butter stuff like the Corolla, they're really good cars. In terms of design though, this new CHR, well this takes it to a whole new level. Looking like it's driven straight off the set of Blade Runner, the new CHR is a compact crossover to rival the likes of the Nissan Juke and Volkswagen T-Cross. Toyota isn't new to this part of the market, of course. In fact, this is the second generation of CHR. The first one, which went on sale in 2017, was kind of one of the cars that kick-started Toyota's more adventurous design streak. And it's still a really good car. It drives well, it's very reliable. And because Toyota offers a warranty of up to 10 years, it can still make a great use by today. Click the link in the description to go and have a look at some used examples. Today, though, we're gonna focus on this. And to start with, well, should we just Look at it. Up front is what Toyota describes as a hammerhead design, although being pedants, we'd say it's more like a tiger shark. Sticking with the fishy theme, the LED headlights curl around the metalwork like eels and aren't so much on the front of the car as halfway up the bonnet. As we come down the side of the car, you will see there are more creases in this than a shirt that I've tried to iron. And look at this quite small glass house as well. Particularly when you have the two-tone paintwork, that really tries to emphasize the coupe-like styling that Toyota talks about with this car. Another neat design to you, so we could go on for days about the design of this car. Pop out door handles, that's very on trend. But another neat design detail, look at this, how the rear doors, there's no bodywork here, it actually goes straight into the lights. And then you follow this all the way around here, again, ends with the light, no bodywork there. It comes all the way around into this light bar here, and you will see when I unlock the car, it lights up. So I to CHR, how cool is that? Um, note, no rear wiper on the CHR. Toyota says that the aerodynamics mean that you don't need one because the water just runs off. And it does, when you're driving along, it does run off. But when it's been wet overnight and you're in your driveway and need to reverse out, it doesn't run off automatically. So that is a bit of a pain. Right, boot space for the CHR. Actually, the first thing to note here is, depends which engine you go for, because whether you go for one of the self-charging hybrids, which are 1.8 or 2 litre, or the plug-in hybrid, the boot space varies. So if you get the 1.8, you get 388 litres of boot space. If you go for the 2 litre, which this is, it's 364 litres of boot space. And if you go for the plug-in hybrid, it's 310 litres. Um, so quite a big difference, actually, between the 1.8 and the plug-in hybrid. The boot space itself, it's a nice square shape. There's a bit of a load lip to come over, and there is no adjustable height boot floor. The other thing really to note about it is if you want to fold the rear seats down, you can't actually, well, I suppose you can just reach over, but there's no release in the boot. You have to do it from there, and then they go 60-40. If you're looking at those door handles snapping in and out and worried about children's fingers getting trapped, fear not, they are spring-loaded, so your pinkies will be safe. Right, into the back of the CHR. First thing to note, the doors don't open all that wide in this car. And once you are inside, it's quite dark in here. Um, if you had a previous gen Toyota CHR, you'll probably remember that the back seats um, are a little bit claustrophobic feeling, quite small windows. This isn't quite as bad, but it's still, you know, you do notice there's quite a lot of body work up here. It's not quite as open as some of this car's rivals. This one has got the optional panoramic roof. It's fixed, it doesn't open, um, but it also doesn't have a blind. Instead, it's got coatings on it to stop it getting too hot, to stop the UV coming in. So actually you get more headroom when you have the roof than when you don't. And headroom is fine. Legroom also, not bad at all. So I'm five foot 11, this one's set for me. Um, loads of room under the seat as well to put your feet. Oh, there go those door handles. They do thunk when they close. Um, you can get three across. It's a bit, yeah, it's quite narrow, um, but you can do it. You also get cup holders in the doors here, that's useful, and in this particular spec, this is a top spec model, we've got one charger here as well, so enjoy it when your kids fight over that. Right, so in the front of the CHR, obviously this is a crossover, um, it feels pretty raised up, perhaps not as high as some of its rivals, but you certainly, you know, you do get that slightly elevated SUV driving position. It does feel a little bit narrow, I think partly because of the design here, it's sort of these lines swoop into the front, almost that shark nose thing again. Um, 
but the design itself is actually really cool it's a bit like the outside just looks a bit different and material quality as well no real complaints there's some padded stuff there's some harder plastics lower down but all very well screwed together as you'd expect of a toyota i quite like this stubby little gear selector here as well um storage is decent so it's quite a big bin under there it's narrow but very deep and a charger in there as well wireless charging pad on this top spec model a couple of cup holders big glove box and then a second shelf there um and you get physical buttons for the heating we like that um so those are really easy to operate those door handles again um probably too many physical buttons on the steering wheel if anything it does get a little bit overwhelming to operate some of this stuff um the dials meanwhile they're a 12.3 inch setup on this high spec model if you go for an entry level one they're a seven inch setup the size of the center infotainment screen varies according to trim lower spec models get an eight inch unit while higher spec cars like our premier edition come with a 12.3 inch screen all come with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. This screen is really good. It's quick to respond, easy to navigate. Some of the settings menus are a little bit fiddly to get to, but the main stuff's all super easy. And again, when you think of older Toyotas, they really lagged behind rivals for touchscreens. Not anymore. Um, you also, in this car, I just want to point out, you get 64 color ambient lighting. Again, very nice touch. And you can have it, there's one setting where it goes through 24 hours of the day, it changes shade slightly as the day goes on. So it's bright in the morning and calmer in the evening. It's still not quite up to Mercedes-Benz level of luxurious ambient lighting, but it's a nice touch. As mentioned, we have the two litre hybrid in this car, the self-charging hybrid. It makes 193 horsepower. It's actually quite a big upgrade over the 1.8, which makes 138 horsepower. So one of the benefits of that is the 0 to 62 time drops from 10.2 seconds in the 1.8 to 8.1 seconds in this. It's quite a bit faster. And it's not just in the 0 to 62 sprint, you just feel it everywhere. It just feels like a more muscular engine. Now we've been driving these Toyota self-charging hybrids as they're now known for a long time now um, ever since the first Prius and they've really refined it it's, it's a good drivetrain you still get if you put your foot down the revs you know you still get the revs from the CVT but all in all it's just a, a really easy smooth car to drive another thing familiar to Toyota's hybrid systems is the B mode on the drive so you get more regen brake regen if you put it in that mode it's quite good and then you also get different drive modes for sport, normal, eco, um, which has changed throttle response and steering weight and things. Go for the plug-in hybrid CHR and you get 220 horsepower plus a pure electric range of up to 41 miles thanks to its 13.6 kilowatt hour lithium-ion battery that's mounted under the rear seats. In terms of visibility in the CHR, again, not perhaps the strongest point of this car's predecessor. And in this car, it's a similar story. It's pretty good. Like out the front, it's fine. Um, this A-pillar is quite chunky, but it's not too bad. Um, but it's over the shoulder visibility that really is the biggest um, complaint with this car. It's quite chunky, the pillars. You do, however, get an awful lot of safety systems. Lots of these are now mandatory. As we all know, from 2024, speed warning signs, speed warning um, beeps and things like that you have to have now. I think what's key in cars now is how easy it is to turn them on and off. And in the CHR, not necessarily that easy. So you go in through the settings using this steering wheel button, but it's acronym bingo in here. There are so many different safety systems. So if we want to turn the road sign one off, RSA, that one's done. It's just, it's such a big distraction. And the systems are just a bit too sensitive in this car as well. So for example, one of them is front cross traffic alert, which will quite often beep just when you're pulling out of a junction, which, you know, is a lot. So all in all, it just does beep and bong at you a bit too much. Walk away from the car, sometimes it beeps at you. I don't know. Handily, the Toyota Safety Sense suite of Acti safety systems in the CHR includes over the air software updates so that they can be enhanced throughout the car's life. Toyota, enhancement request number one is for a lot less beeping, please. The original CHR was actually one of the first of these small crossovers that was pretty decent to drive as well. And this car takes over from that basically. So the steering is well weighted, it's pretty direct. Um, the body doesn't lean over too much in corners. It's generally, I think it would be a stretch to call it great fun to drive, but it's pretty satisfying. And similarly, the ride is perfectly acceptable. I think with a, a car like this, where it's got quite a short wheelbase, um, 
there's always going to be a limit to how smooth you can make it, particularly without adaptive dampers. But generally speaking, the CHR just rolls along quite nicely indeed. I'd be very happy with one of these. As for fuel economy, the standard hybrid model returns 60 miles per gallon on the official cycle if you go for the 1.8, or 58 miles per gallon for this 2 litre. The plug-in hybrid, meanwhile, has an official 353 mile per gallon WLTP figure, although you'll have to charge it an awful lot to achieve that in the real world. In our tests, we have averaged pretty much bang on 50 miles per gallon, which is really pretty good, actually. Um, and on the money saving front, don't forget Toyota offers a 10 year warranty. So long as you keep getting the car serviced at one of its dealers, it'll warranty it for 10 years. That's outstanding. In terms of price, the CHR range starts from just over £31,000 for the entry level Icon trim. This top spec Premier Edition is just under £43,000. If you go for a plug in hybrid, the price range is from between about £39,000 and £44,000, depending on trim. So it's not a cheap car by any stretch. In fact, I'd argue it's probably a bit too expensive. However, overall, it is very good. And I really take my hat off to Toyota for being so bold with the car's styling. I think if you can find a good deal on one, you're gonna be really happy. Although, just check if you can live with all the beeps first. If you love the idea of a CHR but would prefer the first gen model, there are loads of great examples for sale at cargurus.co.uk. As well as checking those out, please do subscribe to the Cargurus UK YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.